All right, welcome to episode five from chapter nine. And in this episode, we're going to cover the third and final step of cellular respiration. And you can argue it's the most important step because this is where most of the ATP is going to be produced. And this step is called the electron transport chain. Now, the electron transport chain is going to occur on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And specifically, I want you to remember that these parts of the inner membrane would be the folds, which are called the cristae. And the cristae, these folds, are going to make a higher surface area so that we can have more mitochondria. Because, the, or I'm sorry, you're going to have more electron transport chains because the more electron transport chains you have, the more ATP you can produce. All right, now, you're going to need electrons for the electron transport chain. And those are going to be delivered by NADH and FADH2. Now, NADH, that was made in, let me get it caught up here. And that was made in glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. And then the FADH, that was made by the Krebs cycle. All right, now these are going to travel down a chain of proteins. So remember proteins that can be embedded inside a membrane. That's what we're going to see here. And then these electrons are going to be used to make water which will be a waste product. And this right here, this is real important. Oxygen is known as the final electron acceptor. And it's gonna be used in this step. And some of that oxygen is gonna be used to produce this water. Now, there's movements of electrons across a membrane. And we're gonna learn something about here called a proton gradient. So remember we talked about diffusion and osmosis in a previous chapter? Those concepts are going to come into play here. And in fact, a proton and a hydrogen ion, they're the exact same thing. All right? Now, the hydrogen ions are going to pass through an enzyme called ATP synthase. Okay, remember synth, this part of the word, that means to make. So basically, this is an enzyme that makes ATP. Now, uh, 24 ATP are made by the electron transport system. Now, 36 ATP total is made by cellular respiration. So two-thirds of them are made here during this step. And this is really, really important that you understand this, that the electron transport chain is the most efficient part of the whole process of cellular respiration. And it's this part where most of the ATP is produced. All right, let's put a picture to all the stuff we just learned about. All right. This graph shows you an electron transport chain. And let's use green to write all over this. All right. Okay, you see these phospholipids right here? This is the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And remember, when we talk about inner membrane, we're also talking about those folds called cristae. All right. So this is the matrix. This is the inside. And the matrix is where the Krebs cycle occurs. And remember, the Krebs cycle is going to make two things for us. NADH, which is carrying electrons, FADH2, which is also carrying electrons. But some of this NADH did come from glycolysis, which occurred in the cytoplasm. All right, in the inner membrane space, this is the spot that's between the inner membrane and the outer membrane of the mitochondria. All right, so let's go through these steps. All right, these NAD... H and FADH2 are going to drop off electrons. Oh, you know what? I want to... One thing here I forgot to write in. You see these blue circles? These are membrane proteins. And they're the specific proteins of the electron transport chain. So the one, two, three, four, five things that you see here, these are the proteins that make up the electron transport chain. All right, so we have NADH and FADH2 they're going to drop off electrons to the chain. Now the FADH, or I'm sorry, the FAD is going to go back to the Krebs. And then the NADH, or I'm sorry, NAD+, plus, these guys are going to go back to the Krebs and glycolysis. Remember glycolysis? will help you spell it. All right, all right, squeeze that right in here. Now, every time an electron goes from one protein to another, 
one protein to another, hydrogens are pumped across, okay? So this would be active transport because we've got lots of hydrogens over here. We don't have as many this way, so we keep pumping them up. We're going to pump them, pump them, pump them, and pump them up. So the energy is supplied by these electrons. Now, these electrons have to get off the chain or we're going to have a backlog. So we're going to come to oxygen. Oxygen, I want you to remember, is the final electron acceptor. These electrons are going to fall onto oxygen. Oxygen is going to become negative. Negative things are attracted to positive things. Hydrogen is positive. You put hydrogen and oxygen together, you get water, which is a waste product. Okay? Now, what do we do with all these electrons? I'm sorry, what do we do with all these hydrogens that are over here in the intermembrane space? Well, the laws of the diffusion says that these guys want to move to this side. Well, the only way they can get from here down to here is they have to go through ATP synthase. Now, as a proton or hydrogen ion flies through ATP synthase, it's going to click. And so we have a whole bunch of these ions flowing through here. So this little circle down here is going click, 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 click. And every time it clicks, it's going to make ATP. All right. So here's how this mechanism works in a real quick review. We have electrons going from chain to chain to chain to chain. And every time it does that, it pumps a hydrogen across. These hydrogens are going to fly back through ATP synthase. And every time it clicks, you make an ATP. This hydrogen here is either going to go to one or two places. Number one, it's going to be used to make water. Or number two, an electron is going to push it back up here so that these things are constantly cycling back and forth. And every time it does that, click, 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 you make some ATP. Now, if there's no oxygen here, this whole chain backs up. No hydrogens get pumped across. No hydrogens go through ATP synthase. No ATP, and you're dead. This is why you can die if you're drowned or if you choke, because you have no oxygen here. You stop this chain. You stop ATP production, and you're going to pass away very quickly. So this is the only reason that we breathe oxygen, is it has to be used in this final step. All right, this is the only step where we get all this detail on how this works, okay, because I thought it was really important that you would know this, all right? We have one more episode to go in this series, so until we get to episode seven, we're going to catch you, I make that episode six, we're going to catch you on the flip side.